Our next guest is one of the heroes starring in the new TV1 series Life Flight, the dedicated emergency air service that has saved the lives of thousands of Kiwis. Welcome Life Flight crewman Julian Burns. Good hey, morning. How are you? So your mission is to save lives. How many have you saved thus far? Uh, in oh. total, over yes. the whole uh, yeah. life of Life Flight? Oh, there'll be thousands. Um, we know, over 20,000, I would imagine. Yeah. Wow. Heck of a lot, yeah. How do you guys operate? What types of medical services do you offer and, and how does it all sort of yeah. work? Uh, we do a, a broad range of things. Anyone who's you know, at risk. So it could be a patient in hospital and needs rapid transport to a, another hospital yep. for life-saving uh, procedures, or heart attacks, car crashes, um, boats that are sinking, uh, you name it. You we'll, name it. We'll go to it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so what sort of stuff's on board? You've got state-of-the-art equipment that... Yeah, totally. On our aeroplane, yeah. <clears throat> um, it's a, essentially a mobile intensive care unit, so okay. uh, we can take two intensive care patients fully yeah. ventilated or two incubators with the premature babies on. Also have the helicopters working as well, because yeah. work? the, the Westpac helicopter works underneath the Life Flight umbrella. That's right, yeah, so Life Flight operates the Westpac Rescue Helicopter in Wellington, Yeah. <clears throat> and we also <clears throat> excuse me, operate the uh, Life Flight Air Ambulance as well, which is a nationwide service. Okay, and so, uh, so how far out do you go, or well, do you generally just service the sort of bottom of the south, uh, bottom of the North Island. In the helicopter, itself. it's the Wellington region. Yeah. Uh, and the aeroplane, the whole Goes country. Goes the whole lot. Whole country, yep. Wow. So what mm. sort of, what are some of the missions that we that we will see in the series? Well, you know, some of the some of the missions that you will see are, are some pretty hair-raising things. We've done some pretty intense uh, missions, like winching and night flying, uh, tend to be some of the most sort of risky things that we'll do. Yeah. One of the um, jobs later in the in the series is a, is a winch. We uh, got a call out to a guy who'd uh, sustained a broken leg on Wellington's south coast, up near Red Rocks, which is, yep. if you know the area, it's a pretty sort of sheer cliff. Yeah. Uh, we found him perched up there. It was fading light. Uh, we had to winch down the paramedic, treat him on the side of a hill, and we're talking a sheer drop here of sort of 400 metres. So we grabbed him and yanked him off the cliff, and it was literally um, sort of a 60-second flight through a hospital, but it was pretty precarious the, the place that he was in we had fading light and um, just because of the wind and things like that it made it a little bit challenging do you, do you worry about your own safety at times when you're doing things sometimes afterwards you, you kind of reflect on it and think man that, you know that was that was pretty hair raising but at the time you know we're working with a crew of incredibly dedicated professionals you know our pilots are the best in the business yeah. our paramedics are the highest trained you know we as winch operators and crew are extremely well trained the the, you know the, the machinery is well maintained, so yeah. you just trust everybody. It's a, it's it's one of those jobs where you, it's a small team. There's a huge amount of camaraderie, yep. and you just work well as a team. So you, not not really, no. There's a very cool backstory to this. It was it was inspired by the Wahini disaster, wasn't it? Was it? yeah. Peter Button, who was a Kiwi legend, um, was on the beach when the Wahini founded back in '68, uh, I yeah. think it was. And he's, you know, the Wahini wasn't that far offshore and these people were dying and he sort of said there's got to be a better way of doing this. If we had a helicopter, we Was could he just save... a young guy at the time? A young guy at the yeah. time. If we had a helicopter, we would have been able to save a lot of these people. So off his own back, he got some finance, bought a helicopter, learnt to fly it, started a life flight and the rest is history. Wow, yeah. that's very cool indeed. How did you get into it? Because you haven't always been doing it, have you? Do you really want to hear the story? Yeah, go okay, on. all right. <laughs> I worked at a radio station in Wellington and we had um, this Carols by Candlelight, it's kind of like a Christmas in a park deal. Yeah. And the deal is they winch Santa in for the kiddies so they can see him. Now, just as a disclaimer too, by the way kids, if you're watching this morning, Santa was busy and he said I could do it for him. Perfect, so of course. He said, Julian, you can wear the Santa suit and I said, sweet. So I jumped into the Santa suit and got winched out of the helicopter over like 20,000 people. Yeah. And I was kind of hanging there and I was thinking, man, this is pretty cool. <laughs> Better work stories and all that. <laughs> and I said to the guys afterwards, I said, this is a great job. And they said, well, why don't you come and volunteer? So I rocked in the next day, knocked on the door and said, I'm here to start work. And, and that, that's how it started, really. It's history. So how long yeah. ago was it? How long have you been doing it? It was late 90s, so I volunteered for about three years yeah. and went through a whole bunch of training and then uh, became full-time. So wow. from Santa's little helper to... Yeah, yeah. to the, the real McCoy. Yeah. It must be incredibly uh, rewarding, your work, in, in terms of what you're doing, getting these folk to hospital. Oh, it's amazing. And, yeah, the job yeah. satisfaction's out of this world, you know, yeah. especially when you get, um, you know, the, the people you've helped come back into base sort of a few months later. Do you ever catch up with... They come in, they bring Do cakes, they? you know. <laughs> uh, it's great. And, and donations a lot of the time and we meet them and talk to them and it's just, it's incredibly satisfying. I mean, you're seeing these people in, in some cases on death's door and yeah. then they're coming back in and it's just like, hey, you look great. So it's, um, 
Yeah, it's very it's satisfying. Cold. Do you fly whatever the weather? It Pretty much. Um, the fixed wing airplane can fly in all weather. Um, it flies on instruments. Yep. Uh, the helicopter, we have to be able to see where we're going. So yep. the only thing that will really stop us flying is poor visibility. Um, bit of wind isn't too bad, which yeah. is just as well in Wellington. <laughs> you get the old Zephyr. Um, so, in fact, a bit of wind's helpful, but yeah, in the helicopter, uh, visibility, if we have poor visibility, we won't go. Now, of course, it is a charity. How can people help? Yeah, hit the website, www.lifelight.org.nz. Yep. Give what you can. Um, that would be fantastic. Yep. Without you guys, yeah. you know, 20-odd thousand people yeah. wouldn't be here. Mm, yeah, fantastic. True. Great stuff. Thank you so much for coming. Welcome. Julie. Looking forward to the show. I know. It's cool. Yeah, indeed. You can catch Life Flight. It's here on TV One Mondays at 8 o'clock, and there is more information on our website still to come. He's here. Dan Wharton is live from London with the very latest update on the Royal Baby Boy right after this.